today we are installing a steering intermediate shaft on the project 5.0 mustang 91 lx model with power steering um, we are very fortunate to have this nice part here provided to us by our friends at buy auto parts um, that's buyautoparts.com um, they sell a, a range of um, maintenance parts replacement um, parts um, they also have uh, various uh, uh, performance upgrades or just various type of upgrades like this um, there's a lot of complaints about the stock steering shaft because of the um, weak feel in the steering and uh, because it has what they call the rag joint and uh, you'll see that this is a different style of intermediate shaft it is by the way it's made in the USA it's um, very nice quality from what I see here and um, yeah there's there it is so right here on the stock intermediate shaft is what they call the rag joint which gives the kind of sloppy feel to the steering and it's replaced with a u-joint now on this Borgeson piece and um, it's also of course got the u-joint up at the top and um, otherwise it fits like stock but it uh, should give us a much improved uh, quality of uh, feel in our steering so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to put this in before we get started uh, let's see, I'm gonna go and take a look at uh, some of the tools. Well, this should be basically all the tools I'm gonna be using. Um, we got half inch extensions, 3 8 extension, because we're gonna have to reach down into the, deep into the engine compartment and uh, from underneath around the frame. Got a half inch ratchet, 3 8 ratchet. And then as far as the sockets go, um, there are some specific sockets. There's an 11 16ths that I'm gonna use uh, for the uh, top joint to free that up. And then also a 5 8 wrench, which should be um, used for that same part of the job as well. And then uh, to get the steering rack freed up, uh, you're gonna need a deep socket 18 millimeter. I know it does get a little confusing because we are using metric and standard at the same time. And then um, also for freeing up the rack, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter socket as well. And then for the lower joint, it uh, is gonna require a 7 16 uh, socket that is 12 points. You are gonna need a 12 point for this part. So you'll see how that works out in a little bit when we get to actually removing it. But uh, there's a, that sums up what we're gonna use as far as tools go. Um, I also have my uh, rust penetrant and my impact gun that'll help me out not everybody's gonna have that and but uh definitely helpful if you got them all right so let's get started all right so to free up the steering rack you got an 18 millimeter nut right here and it's on this long bolt which is why you're gonna need the um the deep socket for this part and then um so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt the two we're gonna undo the two bolts that hold the steering rack to the frame so that we can slide it forward. And um, that way we can uh, get the intermediate shaft out because it has a slide away from the steering rack. And then it's also, of course, uh, connected to the steering column on the other end. So you gotta give it some extra space so you can get it out. And then the other one is just right over here on the other side. There's the bolt that's holding the intermediate shaft to the steering column. And then it's got a nut on the other side, so we're gonna need to uh, loosen and remove those. And then here's the part that gets a little more tricky, but not too bad. We'll show you how to make this work. So, if you can see down there, there is a bolt right here. That's the 12 point um, bolt that's going to need to be removed to get uh, the lower joint out. And some of this stuff's gonna be done uh, from below, some from the top. So we'll get started here and um, show you some tricks to accessing these bolts. All right, so here we are underneath the car. And so this is, sorry, I'm blocking the light. This is the lower joint, the rag joint. You can see this is the rag part. And um, so basically right here is the, backside of it but we're gonna spin the steering column 
or uh, the steering wheel so that uh, we can undo the bolt from down here because it's really tight to reach uh, this bolt from the top. It doesn't make sense to do it that way really. And uh, then, uh, oh another thing is a reference, it says in the repair manual to actually um, mark where this joint meets uh, the shaft that goes out of the uh, steering rack. But I think uh, I know a way that it will work. Um, if you look at the flat spot on the shaft here, it's parallel with the the joint. You can see the flat side here, and it's basically the same setup with the new one. So I can see, I can reference that that flat spot is parallel with this flat spot. So um, we'll just go with that for now because we can't mark them because this is gonna go out and not come back, so. And um, let's see. So what we're gonna do is um, show you how to undo the bolt. Uh, here's the 15 millimeter, the bolt that holds the steering rack. It's on the back side. And then, uh, so we're gonna put a socket on that and then remove the 18 millimeter nut from the front right there. All right, so I got my ratchet in the back with a 15 millimeter socket. And I'm gonna just brace that. Of course, this is a lot easier with the impact. Um, or you can also do it with maybe your uh, breaker bar or half inch ratchet, uh, which I have. All right, so that can just sit there. So we're gonna slide this forward. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Using a deep socket should be about the right length. The extension wasn't necessary. Gonna leave that one off for now so probably can get enough distance by just pulling at this side but we'll see how that goes i should mention by the way <laughs> excuse my missing cylinder head um i did put the the exhaust manifold back into position so i am going to do this just like you would with a complete running vehicle um yeah the head's missing because i'm swapping out the gt40 heads but anyways that's another video but yeah, so now let's see, I want to get the um, upper joint free from the steering column. So I'm going to rotate the uh, column so I can get a more direct um, grip on the bolt. And actually, rather brace the bolt and remove the nut. So I'm going to spin the steering over. Alright, then this way I can just brace the bolt with a wrench and um, I'll just probably use my impact and knock this nut off there. All right, and that should be good. This way I can get a nice direct uh, hit on it. So I'm gonna use the uh, 5 8 wrench, combination wrench, and my, um, let's see, this was 11 16 socket on the top here so we can zap this nut out of here. Whoop, there goes my nut, but we'll set those aside. Double drop. So now this is free to slide out at the top. And we'll go and um, check the location of the bottom bolt and we'll go underneath and take that one out. All right, so I got my 716 socket, 12 point, on an extension, but it uh, doesn't quite line up. So I'm just gonna rotate the steering wheel back to the left a little bit so we can line this up. Oh, that looks much better. All right, so we'll use the 3 8 ratchet and break this one loose. There we go. That wasn't too bad. I actually did spray a little bit of rust penetrant in there ahead of time. Just because I see a good amount of rust and corrosion in there. Not too bad. All right, so now we've got stuff unbolted and just gotta slide it apart. All right, 
so now I've got my steering wheel facing forward so I can refer to how everything's going to line up. Alright, so we got to slide our steering rack out so that we can uh, get the shaft to separate. So I'm working on pushing the steering rack away from the frame. And what I've done is, well, I sprayed a little WD-40 in there to try to help it. And I've used the pry bar to push the rack out. Um, it is a rubber bushing on a metal sleeve here, so it does require a little bit of um, help to slide out, um, assuming your bushings aren't all worn. And uh, as you can see right here, the um, shaft is already starting to slide out. So we just gotta keep working at it until we can get this end to pop out or slide out. And then we'll remove it off of the rack and go ahead and put in the new one. So here we are down below. You can see how far the rack has come off of the frame. There's that metal sleeve. So when we're done, I'm just gonna push it right back on there and check the alignment of the steering wheel and uh, then we'll torque everything down again. Pry bar helps. And I'm also pulling the rack back. That's okay though. Now uh, you'll notice that you're uh, start running into the exhaust, but uh, we should be able to just pull the rack back and get it out. Before I do the little side-to-side -side comparison of the shafts, I'm just going to shine the light in there. You can see right back in there, uh, yeah, there's the shaft sticking out of the steering rack. What I did is I actually ran an extension up in there and bang, I tapped the, because uh, I have, you know, there's some rust from age and whatnot some corrosion and rust and uh, try not to be too shaky here. so the shaft back here um, you know it was sticking a little bit and uh, so I just tapped it with a hammer the steering rack is gonna try to slide back so you gonna have to uh, maybe wedge something in there to keep it from sliding back where uh, it started but yeah just a little tapping nothing too crazy you don't want to damage anything you also want to be careful not to slam it into your exhaust manifold up there and dent it so yeah just take your time do it with care all right so let's take a look at the um the shaft side by side so here is the old one obviously it's all rusty and crusty so the thing about the uh the old one that everybody complains that is no good is this rag joint so see instead of a metal to metal connection um there's this um, I don't know what that is nylon rubber or something like that and um, It's very flexible. So it gives a mushy feel to the steering where now we're gonna have this nice um, all-metal U-joint and um, it Feels very smooth by the way, but um, yeah, and one thing we're gonna do is um, we have to loosen up this bolt that uh, locks it into position should I believe hit that flat spot that we were using to refer to um, alignment or to align it so we're gonna just take out the lock nut and bolt and then we'll go ahead and slide it into position all right so a couple of little tools that I forgot to mention is uh, let's see um, for the locking nut and bolt on the shaft the new shaft 
there is going to be a 5.30 seconds Allen, and I have the socket version of it. So that's how you can uh, tighten it down, snug it down in the end. And uh, then to lock it in place, you can use a half inch uh, socket to tighten this nut. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install this intermediate shaft. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get the shaft started. I've got the locking bolt backed out so that it's not sticking into the passage here. And we're going to set this up on the steering shaft. Sorry, my arm's in the way. But basically, so when this is in the right position, see that flat spot that I mentioned earlier? This flat spot should be parallel with this bolt. So they should be running in the same direction. And uh, I found that's a good reference to line this thing up. And then I'm sliding it all the way down so that I can get it forward a little bit and line up the upper joint. By sliding that lower joint in nice and far, <laughs> it gives us a little room to get this upper joint and their shaft lined up into the steering column. So now, um, steering, the wheels are still pointed forward and um, everything looks aligned. Of course, we're gonna double check that when we're done. But now we gotta push the steering rack back into position and tighten everything down, um, which is the point, well, right before we tighten down, we're gonna um, double check and make sure everything's still in alignment. So now we're going underneath to um, push the rack back into position. Gonna spray a little WD-40 in there into the bushings so I can get them to slide back a little more easily. So we're just sliding the bushing back onto the metal sleeve and uh, yeah, the bolt's just kind of chilling there. There we go. So with the WD-40 on there, you can just push it back by hand, no problem. So that works nicely. Push the bolt back through. The washer and nut on there. That's a lock nut, so yeah, it does take some force to put it back on. All right, so now, see, I I have the um, rack pushed back, and I want to get the shaft into pretty much its final position. Just needs a little help going up. There we go. Alright, so it was a little stiff, tight fit getting it up in there. And uh, since my steering wheel is forward, I'm just going to put it the way it started with the bolt going down and nut on the bottom. Alright, so it's another lock nut, so I'm going to rotate it again to tighten it back down. And uh, But that's okay for now. Alright, so we got the bolt back in. Lower shaft is in position, or lower joint I should say. Steering rack is pushed back to basically where it's going to end up, it's just not torqued down. So I'm going to double check and make sure that my wheels are facing straight forward, which uh, looks like they are. I'm going to go around and double check the uh, steering wheel. Alright, steering wheel looks straight. So now we can torque everything back down. So before I tighten the upper joint, I want to get this lower joint in a position and make sure that the, the locking bolt is holding it properly. So I'm just going to give this a um, light snug, not too crazy, with the 5.30 seconds uh, Allen. And then just going to tighten down the half inch nut. 
think I got the nut tight before I did the There we go. Make sure that your nut's not getting tightened down as your bolt is. Okay. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna snug the bolt. Then swap out the 5.30 seconds for the half inch socket. And we'll lock that down. Sorry about the funky view here. There we go. Okay. Got that locked in position. Now we'll go up top and we'll tighten the upper nut and bolt and we'll be all done. So again, I rotated it so I can fork down the uh, nut there. And then using uh, my 5 8 combination wrench and my 11 16 socket. Gonna tighten this down. Oops. There we go. Alright. Nice and tight. Alright, so everything's locked down and uh, we're all done. And uh, installation is complete. Hope that was a good view of all the steps for you guys. And But there it is. Now in its new home. And we're gonna have some much better steering feel now. So thanks for watching guys. We really appreciate uh, Buy Auto Parts providing this part to us. And uh, oh, some information on it. The, this is again, it's the Borgeson uh, Intermediate Shaft. And uh, there's the info on it. It's uh, part number 000656 right there. And uh, that'll help you locate it. On this particular application, which I think is the most common, it's going to be for the um, power steering models, 5.0s, um, various years. And uh, thanks for watching.